Hey everybody, welcome to the CC and JT Amata Awa, where production values go to die. You know, you know who people are by now, but over there, CC. And JT. Uh, coffee, 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 coffee. It's um, Sunday, May 24th, 2024. Yes. This is like our 162nd broadcast or yes, something like is. that. Podcast, video, well not videos, we haven't kept up the videos, but for podcasts, 162. Four years of doing this, and uh, we still haven't figured things out, but we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, we are. Someday. 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 Yeah. And I just noticed if you do see uh, flickering lights in the background, that is the light on. I have white lights on our mantle back there, so it's mm. not the frame rate or anything that is an actual flickering light. Yep. Um, so who we are, what we do is, is uh, we are writers of a certain age, independent writers. We've been doing this for over uh, 10 years. Uh, not a great amount of financial success, but um, we do it because we love it. And if we love it, it's not work or something like that. Well, you've been doing this for 10 years. I've actually been doing it probably most of my adult life. Well, you know, it's that's when I first published. Yes, okay. yes. But yeah, you've been, yes. Doing it for, you've, you've been doing it for a great deal longer. Yes. Uh, and what we're doing here, the purpose of what we're doing here, in case you uh, are a first-time viewer, by the way, hello is um, we like to share, um, you know, the, the um, you know, what is it? The sausage making, you know? <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, there's two behind things. Behind the scenes. You, behind the scenes. There's two things you never want to see, how the sausages are made and how laws are made. Yeah. And so what we do is we do a little bit of the sausage making here behind the scenes. And we pick, you know, various subjects as we go along. Uh, sometimes we pick sex. Sometimes we pick... Um, you know, um, you know, technical stuff like you know, grammar, grammar, grammar things, language, like, like word choice. And uh, what we do is for our podcast, which the structure is very loose and free because um, we know production values. You know, <laughs> those are, those are for people who get paid for a living. Uh, what we do is we we do, we talk about our local projects, our you know what we're doing with our you know individual works in projects, progress. works mm -hmm. in progress, and then we mosey on into the. Uh, uh, the podcast subject itself, and I think we have an interesting one today because uh, we uh, we have a, I don't know if it's a blind spot, but it's something that we haven't really dived into in our book. So I did do one book that I had, and well, yep. we'll get to we'll get to right. all that. we'll get to all that. Right. First of all, um, works in progress. Um, it, it, it this week has been the the key. This week has been cacophony because I've been going all over mm -hmm. the place because cacophony. So cacophony? it's been very loud. Are uh, about just chaos. Chaos, yes. Chaos is probably the word Chaotic. I'm looking for. See? Grammar. Um, chaos. So, uh, it's like at one time I have I have the Maggie series, which um, is The Sheriff in Nevada, which has two books, and then I had three books planned. And then I killed book three. And what I was going to do is I was going to take another book and I was going to, you know, stick it in there and make that book three. And then I started reading that book three, which I wrote last year, and it's you know, and I started getting into it, and I started reading it, and it's like, yeah, this is a, this book doesn't suck. This book is this book has 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 potential. So I worked on that book this week. But now it is not going to be a Maggie book anymore. <laughs> you no, know, it's not going to be a Maggie book. It's going to go back to being its own book. And so, um, and so, books three and four have disappeared. And so now what I'm doing is this. I've started book three, and I'm just going to finish that, and then I'm going to take what was going to be book five, and I'm going to make that, uh, you know, part of book three. So, but I'm going to finish this other book first, and uh, I haven't given it a code name yet, other than Zoe. So I'm working on the Zoe book, which has almost sixty thousand words, and I was just going to take chop that one up and throw it in the Maggie book. But you know what? This 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 other book was just. You feel it stands better on its own. It feels stands better on its own, and I, I think you read it. I did, yes. So. Yeah, we've discussed it. I think you were working on it when we were doing a trip somewhere. Yeah. I think you may have actually been reading it to me while I was driving. Yeah. Because that's my memory, is that you were reading something, and we may have been in southern Nevada? Or yeah. southern Can I don't know. We were on the road somewhere, I feel like. Yeah. Not a normal road trip. Oh, anyway, we were reading, so. but, but that's the kind of thing that we do. Yeah. Even when we're traveling, we don't take time off from writing because it's always there. You can't get away from it. So yeah. my metaphor is, <laughs> and I even use this metaphor in the Zoe book, is the, the cat scratching inside a cardboard box. It's always there. You can always hear it. It's okay. And then um, the Space Epic is still uh, in progress with CC. Yes. But 
this week is going to be impossible to do anything because this is going to be an extremely emotional, stressful week for you because yes. Friday is the big day. Yep. Retirement. Retirement. Friday is my last day at my day job. And I realized this morning that I'm feeling a little bit guilty about this. Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, I said I was going to take care of you until you were ready for Medicare. And I'm not doing that now. So I feel like I know I've had a lot of complicated emotions. And I realized that one of the stronger ones right now is guilt. Yeah. So we are going to be pushing very hard to augment our income through our writing. Yeah. Hopefully I can still take care of you that way. Yeah, it's going to be... Even though I am, we are maintaining our insurance and things like that. So that's, I'm maintaining that part of the bargain at least. But yeah. things started happening and sometimes, what is it you say? Man plans and God laughs. Yeah. There you go. Prime yeah. example. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, staying there for X number of more years was, was not doable because of things. And I'm not going to mm -hmm. get into that because... No. Um, there's no point in that, but it's, um, it works. Um, as, as you've been telling people, you're ready for the next stage of life. You're ready yep. for the next exciting thing to happen. The next yep. adventure you did the current, you did your current workplace for 17 and a half years. And yes. it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's time. And I've been working for various aspects of public service for the last 23, I actually started 26 years ago, but had 23 years of service. So. Oh. Uh, it's been a long time. I realized, you know, 17 and a half years, it's the time it took to raise one of our kids. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like I'm jo hopping from job to job, mm -hmm. which has become more common for various reasons. Yeah. But uh, this was a long time in the same office. I did different jobs along the way, but... Um, yeah, but you got promoted because of excellence, so as, a, as it Because be. people left. <laughs> no, you got promoted because of excellence, because you... Thank you. you. you Anyway, anyway. Partially, though, because people left. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's going to be a very emotional week for uh, CC and me because we're, you know, we're closing the door, uh, a big door. Uh, and uh, it's not to say we're not going to be going back to full-time employment because, uh, but we are definitely taking the rest of the year off yep. before we make any kind of those, those decisions. And I don't know if I would go back to full-time employment. Part-time yeah. might be all I need yeah. or all we need. Um, but we're really hoping that um, doing a little bit more marketing, getting people more aware of what we're putting out there. Because you have how many books out? Oh, God, 10 or 11. 10 or 11. I only have one for the moment, but I have many in progress that can probably come out pretty, hopefully regularly over the next two or three years. So hopefully the, between the two of us, we can build up an audience and, uh, you know, get people may be interested in what we're doing, try to follow along the grandparents as they uh, yeah. <laughs> wander around. We've got some, we do have some actual real adventures planned. We do. In fact, uh, um, we're, we're going to be taking a trip to Southern California to visit family. Yep. Uh, so we're looking forward to that and we will probably do a podcast or at least do something from there, we, you know, to, you know, do, do some videos. Yep. Um, I'll put some links to our TikToks and stuff up on the page where y'all can see them. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the big trip. Yeah, that we, we, uh, we're, 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 yeah, yeah, we, yeah, so. So we have lots of adventures planned. Yeah, we have lots of adventures planned. Okay, um, today's topic, as you saw from the, uh, either you got it via the email or through social media. And by the way, if you're doing this through social media, you can go out to our, our website and you can sign up to receive notifications whenever we uh, post, uh, do a blog post. And, uh, you know, that's our kind of our newsletter. And we have dozens of people that do that. So if you want to uh, do that, you know, you, you know, please feel free because uh, all you, I think all you need to do is just enter your email and so on and so forth. And we're never going to sell those emails. We don't emails. spam or anything. Yeah. And we're not going to sell those emails because honestly, to honest God, we have no idea how to get to them. You know. <laughs> well, and we wouldn't do that because we've had our emails spammed. Yeah. And it's a... Well, not even just email, like mail, mail, yeah. but it's like, it's very frustrating. So we won't do that. Yep. Um, and so here we are, uh, we are in, uh, Purim or we just, Purim just finished. I'm not sure. Forgive us. We're, you're going to learn very quickly how non-religious we are. Uh, but, uh, Purim was yesterday. I believe so. And, uh, Ramadan is go going on now. I believe, I believe so. so. And of course, the uh, the Catholic high holidays, or Christian high holidays, for lack of a better phrase, are happening right now. 
As a matter of fact, you're retiring on Palms, uh, no, no, Good Friday. Today is Palm Sunday. Today's Palm Sunday. Friday is Good Friday, so, and then yeah. next Sunday will be Easter. Yeah, so. In the traditional church, the Orthodox church calendar is a little bit different. Yeah. But so basically, we're we're basic in a lot of high holidays right now, coincidentally. Yep. But uh, if you've read our books, or if you haven't read our books, you're about to hear that religion isn't really a part of those books. Now I'm going to caveat that very briefly by saying I did write a religious related book, a religion related book, but it was weak, it was lame, and I took it off. So you know, we're, I'm going to go as that doesn't count because um, it, it was just weak. Um, but. Uh, when you read our books, you're going to see that religion. You're going to see that religion do doesn't have a centerpiece, and um, and in fairness, um, I'm drawn to books that don't have religion. I was just thinking about it. And a lot of famous books. You know, not the most famous book, obviously, because um, people will tell you the Bible is the biggest selling book, which you know, which is okay, uh, but. Uh, religion doesn't really take a part of it, and it's interesting because we come from a kind of a religious upbringing, both of us. And yep. you go ahead, uh, you know, stumble through yours, and then I'll stumble through mine. Well, probably mine is much more straightforward than yours. I'm thinking. I come from a an Irish and a Portuguese background, which I didn't know at the time because more of my Irish roots were emphasized as I was growing up. But both of those are very Catholic nations, and in many ways. I mean, Ireland obviously is challenging, and I don't know enough about Portugal to really go into it, but both of them have very strong Catholic influences. And um, growing up, I did go to church pretty regularly until I was about six years old. And one of the reasons for that was that my younger brother was born when I was six years old. And he was a very energetic and challenging child, and it made it too frustrating for my mom to try to go to church because my mother was probably the more religious of my two parents. So um, I did go to church every week up until that point. After that point, I think we were pretty much just the holidays. We would do Easter. We would do Christmas. You know, we didn't do the full Lenten season. We didn't do the fasting. We didn't do the fish Fridays and things like that and all those traditions. I did go to catechism when I was very young and did make my first Holy Communion when I was about eight. And um, then pretty much after that, I was not confirmed. The last real rite that either one of us experienced in the Catholic Church was our wedding, mm -hmm. because we did have a Catholic wedding. And we had to go through a process to do that because neither one of us, I'm pretty sure you didn't make either your communion or your confirmation. So yeah. mm -hmm. we had to go through a process to be able to get married in the Catholic Church. And we toyed with the idea of continuing on because it is, I think one of the things you are missing when you're not involved in a religion is kind of a structure to the year because every day is just like every other. But when you're within a religious framework, as we mentioned, there are a lot of different holiday seasons that people go through and they are um, just thinking about higher powers and life and all of that. And it's, it's a very, it can be, I guess, a very um, intense experience for a lot of people. I never mm. found that. It was more of, you know, just, I remember going into dark churches, like they had the offshoot room where we would go for catechism. I'd go to regular school during the day and then I'd go to catechism and I remember the nun's name was Sister Helen. And at the time, I was actually toying with the idea of, you know, how little kids go through various career mm -hmm. ideas. I wanted to be a nun right. until they started changing the uniform that the nuns wore, the full, you know, the old fashioned, what they called the penguin mm -hmm. with the, everything, the cowl and everything. When they switched to more of a scarf and a shorter skirt, I'm like, eh, no, nope, never mind. I like the traditional. You know, if you think of maybe the scene in The Sound of Music with all the nuns and the wedding and things like that. So I was very... Sound of Music. Very Sound of Music. But it was, uh, you know, it wasn't for religious reasons. Basically, I liked the clothes. Um, and I remember learning a few things. But it's... If I miss anything about being religious... And I do... I consider myself a spiritual person, but maybe not necessarily a religious person. Because I think there is a difference. So um, I think I, I miss the structure of the year. And we do 
still celebrate Christmas, but not really as a religious holiday. It's become very secular and commercial and, you know, the Coca-Cola Santa type of thing, but that's a whole different story. So um, that's kind of my background in the church. The church. Um, <clears throat> my, uh, my religious upbringing is kind of a, a mixture. Um, obviously, for us to participate in a Catholic wedding, uh, I would have had to be baptized. Uh, and so, um, because my mother was at one time very Catholic, and she had gone through everything, and we, I think we have a picture or two of her going through uh, what you were saying that, um, but uh, yeah. I was baptized in the Catholic Church. And, but that was almost the end of the, you know, religious experience until I got to teenagers. And I don't know why, uh, because my mother was always searching for answers, and I think sometimes um, that's why people are part of a religion, because they're searching for answers to questions that cannot be answered. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's, and so they, um, and I think that my mother, my mother hopped, uh, my mother was my primary care, caregiver with my father out of the, out the, out the picture, and stepfathers came and went. Um, but she tried various religions along the way, various religions. And the one that took hold of me the, the, the hardest was the Baha'i faith. When if I were to consider myself to be, to be close to any religion, it would be the Baha'is because of their message of peace and you know, one God for all. Um, but the um, she continued to hop through, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, she continued to hop through religion uh, as, she, as she aged, as she got older, and, um, you know, I don't think she ever found the answers to the questions that, well, that can't be answered. And um, so it, it came to me that religion, for some people, is the centerpiece of their exist of conscious existence. Right. But for other people, it's a means to the end. And for, you know, it's a complicated, it's a complicated religion. And for, it was certainly was for my mother. And, um, you know, it's, it's probably why religion never settled with me because, you know, the, the, there was even a voodoo period in there, folks. And, you know, that's, that's an interesting period. Um, but religion never really settled with me because uh, I think the same thing with me, it, I think the same thing happened to me that happened with my mother as we came to realize that there's no answers in religion. Right. Um, uh, and that's, and I'm going to know, I know that's going to trigger some folks because uh, it seems, it sounds very simplistic. Oh, yes. It sounds very simplistic, but uh, I want the answer to two plus two. Right. And religion doesn't give that. You just have to accept the fact or the faith through faith. Right. Faith is. You have to accept your yes. faith. You, you have to give up some cognitive um, calculation. Right. And. That bothers me. That bothers mm -hmm. me because I, 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 I want to know how we got to the answer. I want to see the work. Right. It, it's, it's difficult to express, but it's, it gives an idea probably, you know, partially about my, my existence too. That, you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't want just questions. I want answers and realistic, right. reasonable, realistic answers in religion. Uh, provides many of those. Don't get me wrong. It does provide many of those because it mm -hmm. does provide, you know, companionship. It does provide a sense of society. It does yep. provide a sense of regularity, but it doesn't answer the ultimate question. Right. What's over there? And, you know, it's like religion, you, you, you have to have the faith that there is a heaven or whatever religion you observe. Yes. Your version of heaven. And I'm not going to repeat any of them because I, you know, I, and we're not saying that one religion is better than another. Mm -hmm. It really, as you found out, your mom tried a various, mm -hmm. various different types of religions to find one that fit her, basically. Yeah. And um, so we're not saying that, you know, one is superior to the other. As you were talking, it just occurred to me that I'm very culturally Catholic mm -hmm. because it was like my parents, my aunts and uncles, my grandparents... Mm -hmm. Um, my Irish grandmother, when she visited this country, they actually had the priest come out to the house to say hello to her, you know, so that was kind of commonplace in my upbringing, even though I wasn't always going to church. Whereas your grandparents, I think your grandmother might have been Episcopalian yeah, or maybe, you know, it, it, so it's not like your entire family ever really. Even my su super faithful aunt, I understood was, you know, very religious, but 
I it guess was a different faith. Yeah, but I guess, uh, I, you know, I don't know. It's a complicated thing. But it's it, a, it just occurred to me that I have a very specific, like, mm -hmm. cultural family heritage generations back in the Catholic Church, which basically, I think most of my family at this point is my generation and younger. I don't think any of us are really traditionally practicing Catholics anymore. Yeah, it's... You know, it's the, the question, did, did I leave the church or did the church left, leave me? Right. But, um, we're not going to go down that road. No. Uh, we wanted to provide our backgrounds, and then we wanted to answer the question. Religion in books. Yep. Okay, so generally speaking, and this is just my experience just from, you know, looking looking at the screen here, looking at the screen here, is that once you make um, religion a, a centerpiece of your book, it gets pigeonholed. It gets True, pigeonholed whether yeah. it is or not. Now, there's exceptions to that, of course, because there's, you know, there's the Father Dowling Mysteries, you know, oh, yeah. things like that. Yeah. You know, there's famous series out there, famous works, where religion is a feature, not a bug. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's still, a, you know, it's still a book that is consumed by the masses. Right. Uh, but um, what I've seen is, is once you, um, once you, you know, you, you stick religion as, you know, part of the you know, main character, Sometimes it gets pigeonholed and um, it, it draws, I don't want to say it draws flies, but it can draw uh, vi vi vitriol. Vitriol, yeah. Vitriol. It can draw vitriol. But that's not why I don't have religion in my books is because um, that's, you know, um, it, and that, again, it, it's not completely true because the space epic does have some religion, but it's it's not the main feature of it. I didn't really consider that a religion, though. That was more, I mean, I guess now that you mention it, it probably was, but mm. it was, they had observances based mm -hmm. on things that happened to them. Right. And so I guess your intention was to make that a religious experience, whereas I just took it as it was a tradition based upon what... Yeah, it was, it's supposed so to be I a guess tradition. It kind of depends on really your definition of religion. I mean, what do you consider religion? Is it going to a church or a temple yeah. or okay. whatever? So, so hard question or easy question, easy for you. You say you've got the X number of books planned. Yes. Um, will religion be a part of them? Not technically. Mm. So, depending on how they go, there will be some paranormal aspects and. Mm. Religion and the paranormal can sometimes kind of flirt with each other, but I mm. don't know that I will actually have anything. So I think of things like the exorcist, mm -hmm. you know, for example, there is like a Catholic type of background to that story. Um, going paranormal, you could kind of, because that was basically it, demonic yeah. possession. So not, that is not uppermost on my mind. No. Yeah. So you, you see, it's, it's complicated for it, even for us to to you know to put you know put the uh, to frame it so mm -hmm. to speak, um, and um, it, it is such a it's such a volatile subject. It is such a volatile subject, such yes. a tender subject, and um, you know the the people there there are people out there where it is their entire existence, and they feel that they have to defend and attack, defend and attack. And it, it's it's not really a road we want to go down to. When we write our books, we want them to be uh, entertaining. We mm -hmm. want them to be interesting, but we do not want them to be weaponized. No, we want them to be more of an escape from reality than yeah. having to deal with what's going on in the world. Yeah, and so, but but there are just folks out there that are just resting on on the edge of the precipice, ready to jump into any kind of um, any kind of hint that something is being disrespected and it's that's that's not what we want to do in our books we want our books to be interesting we want our books to be as you said escape mm -hmm. but we don't want them to be fodder and we don't want them to no. be weaponized or anything like well, that well i think we want to appeal to a broad audience we want people to enjoy them at face value and maybe not read into them too deeply because religion can be such a deep subject and it's more of a you know we're entertaining at a surface level basically yeah, I don't know. It's it's really it's something that I've wrestled with for a very long time. Not on a, not only on a writing basis, but on a personal basis. And it's it's a difficult, challenging subject where uh, where you you just you know you you can't help but piss somebody off. Oh, definitely. Not everything is for everybody, and it's taken me a long time to get to actually ingest that and understand it on a deeper level because. 
you know, I am basically a people pleaser. And if somebody doesn't like something that I do, I take it very personally, even though it's probably just that it's not necessarily that I've done something wrong, but that it's just not what the other person resonates or mm. what resonates for them. Mm. So that's a really hard, especially as a writer, that's a hard lesson to learn because we want to appeal to and entertain as many people as possible. And the reality is, is, is there's just so much else to write about. Yep. There's just so much else to oh, write about. Endless opportunities. It's just endless opportunities. And so, you know, and so I guess what, for listening to ourselves here, listening to us as we speak, we sound sort of defensive. And I, I, that would be a fair assessment. It would be, I guess we are kind of defensive when it comes to the subject of religion, but it's a complex emotional subject for us, obviously. And when we write, we are also escaping. Mm -hmm. And so we want to, we, we don't want to bring stuff in, you know, that, that, you know, that would affect our writing or affect the flow. You know, I really, you know, you know, I thought I had the answer when I started this podcast. Not so much. Well, hmm. and as we talk, like you said, things are coming up that maybe didn't really we didn't really consider initially when we mm -hmm. brought up the idea of this topic because it's not one that we normally talk about i do know people who are still very religious but they're older it seems that younger generations and now i'm talking more in a christian sense probably mm -hmm. i'm not sure about all religions but it seems like a lot of the younger generations are no longer following along with the very strict traditional Christian religions as much as they were. And I know the Catholic Church, for example, has really wrestled with that, that they're losing people because um, I know someone who is a member of the Knights of Columbus yeah. and that, you know, their membership is basically all passing away and they are not getting younger people to fill those positions because it's just not something... You know, I'm not sure over time, like did, I said. Did, did they leave the church? Or did, or did the, the church, church leave, leave them? them? Yeah. And that's like I was saying with my family. I think my generation and younger probably no longer really has that desire for the church as but, much as we did. Yeah, but that's a pretty white paintbrush too. I so. know, I know. I'm saying the ones that I know of, I'm not saying every... Because yeah. obviously I have the huge family and I don't know a lot of them. <laughs> so there may still be people... <laughs> Do you know what we're talking about? Do you know what we're trying to say? Because if you know what we're trying to say, we sure would like somebody to tell us because we don't have a clue. Well, the, the question is, if you are a younger generation than us, which is quite a few generations now, and you have you had a strong religious upbringing in a Christian sense or in some other faith that you still feel serves your purpose in life? Mm -hmm. Or do you feel like maybe that's something that is phasing out as society evolves i guess yeah i think american cynicism has a lot to do with that yes. we obviously can't speak about, about oh, the world, Europe, but definitely. american cynicism has a lot to do with that our question of uh, of uh, organizations you know our you know formal organizations yeah this is a complex subject and i'm just going to kind of write this up mm -hmm. this is a very complex subject and i don't feel we really answered why we don't put it in our books we do sort of hint at it in books um but um, when we tried to explain it, I felt a very a sense of de uh, defensiveness that probably isn't warranted. Um, well, but it, 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 yeah. I think what just occurred to me is that it's not really something I include in my books because it's not really at the forefront of my mind yeah. because we don't practice a regular faith at this yeah. point in yeah. time. So it's just not something we do on a daily basis yeah, and we haven't funny. really thought about doing that yeah it just may be as simple as that okay yep. did that make sense <laughs> well if nothing else i mean we may not have said anything satisfying at all about including religion in your writing or writing religious works or any of that um hopefully we started a conversation somewhere yeah. and that's kind of what we hope to do with these podcasts is maybe you know we could be full of hooey like you like to say yeah we may be full of hooey but hopefully we give you something to think about and something to consider. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. There are no easy answers. There's no easy answers on this one. Um, so what do you think? You know, send us some feedback. Um, we know of at least one local writer who um, is, is very religious, and I'm mm -hmm. sure when she sees this, she's going to have some thoughts, which we're looking forward to. Because Actually, it's great that you bring her up because she has done a book that talks about deconstructing and reconstructing faith. Yeah. And um, actually, I've 
kind of should read that book. Yeah. I'd be fascinated to see how it resonates with me. But yeah. you're right, that would be interesting to hear her take on our thoughts. Okay. Uh, I'm right. <laughs> if you do happen to celebrate a traditional religious season, we hope that you are enjoying your celebration, that you're finding it satisfying. And we have nothing against anybody who feels comfort and a sense of purpose in traditional religious, you know. We're just neutral folks. That's we're just, very neutral. We're yes. very neutral. Okay. You can get, you can find podcasts and uh, videos that make much more sense than this one <laughs> by going out to our website at www.carsonhume.com. Uh, Unless we do a surprise podcast, the next podcast and a video that you'll see from us will be from two unemployed slackers that are living off the government that, you know, don't have a job. And like... <laughs> Here comes the guilt again. No, <laughs> relax. You earned this. That's this... what people keep telling me. It's like, yeah. oh, great for you. you. And I'm like, this. yeah, but what about all the other people my age that are still working? It's yeah. like, you know. Well, and it goes back to, I am retiring from my day job. That doesn't mean I'm retiring from working at all. Yeah, we're going to be so busy. We're, we're going to be very busy. We're going to be so busy. So much so much writing. Um, anyway, thank you for following along, and thank you for you know, to tolerating. <laughs> if you made it this far, congratulations. Thank you for putting up with us. <laughs> yeah, we should send you a prize. I'll tell you what, if you send... It's, if you send us an email that says Apple, I'll reply, I'll reply with a code for a free book. How's that? <laughs> Since you survived this long. Apple, free book. Okay, that's wow. the code word. There you go. Yeah, Apple. That'll, free book if you survive this long. <laughs> okay, sitting over there, CC. And over there is JT. And we hope that you have a wonderful week. And as CC said, if you are observing, uh, much respect and much strength. And uh, we we um, you know we we hope for the, we hope the, for the best. And until next time, y'all take care of yourself. Love you lots. Bye-bye now.